St. James on this auspicious occasion. A couple of announcements before we start. Um, it is great to have the Right Reverend Bonnie Perry with us today. Um, and it is a custom to give donations to the Bishop's Discretionary Fund. So any loose change that ends up in our offering plate but this morning, instead of doing that, let's give all of our money to Episcopal Relief and Development for all of our siblings who are in the midst of this massive crisis from Hurricane Helene. All right? So, so I, would, I would much prefer we do that instead of my discretionary fund, because I'm just going to send everything to my discretionary fund that way anyway. So when it comes to a check, how would you like that? Would it, do you want the check? Check made Episcopal. up to Episcopal Relief and Development. All right, got that everybody? Be generous, let's help our neighbors. Cheers. All right. Hold on, I was, let me just grab a drink.
was to be the one holy and living God. Glory to God, God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Would you let us pray? O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The rabble among them had a strong craving. <laughs> and the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now <laughs> our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrance of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat for all these people? For they came weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. 
I am not able to carry this people all alone, for they are too heavy for me. If I have found favor in your sight, do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the tent. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. <laughs> And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. The word of the Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God. The psalm is from Psalm 19, and it's found on page 4 of the bulletin, and we'll read it responsively by half verse. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be deserved are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And you tell how often he offends. Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. When shall I be bold and proud and innocent of great offense? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, a reading from the letter of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell in the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of heaven enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bonnie Perry, and I serve as your bishop, and I am delighted to be here with all of you this morning. I have, um, I've been here a number of times, but because of when my tenure began and the world of COVID, this is the first time I've been in your sanctuary to lead a worship. Last time I came to visit on a Sunday morning, we were Zooming. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really happy to be here with all of you in person. So question, are you happy 
with how the world is. I know, right? How does the world need to be changed? How in God's name are we going to be that change in this our world? If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better to enter life maimed with one eye, one foot, or one hand than to have two and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. <laughs> Let me assure you that 21st century mainline Protestant preachers, well, we just live for passages like this. <laughs> Nothing says, let's connect with the people and make scripture appealing to them like a good old-fashioned chunk of the Bible admonishing people to cut off offending body parts <laughs> lest they risk eternal damnation, hellfire, and worms, particularly the worms. <laughs> where, where the heck is Cotton Mather when you need him? Here's my take on this piece of scripture. It's metaphor. <laughs> Jesus was clear and Jesus was serious. There are things, parts of our lives, activities, actions, privileges, ways of being in the world that some of us take for granted that are not bringing us closer to God. They are, in fact, stumbling blocks for us and, in some cases, for other people. And faithful people, faithful, discerning people are called to excise these ways of being from our lives. We need to relinquish those aspects of our lives lest they separate us and others from our best selves and from the love of God. Last week, I received an invitation from the President of the United States to attend an event on gun violence prevention at the White House. Whoa, really? <laughs> I'm scrolling through my email. Okay, maybe I was on a Zoom call. <laughs> so being the trusting person that I am, as my colleague Mark Miliotto says, trust but verify, I immediately sent the invitation to a former parishioner who used to be Michelle Obama's chief of staff, and I said to her, hey, Tina, is this thing legit? And she quickly replied, oh, yes, that's exactly how they send those, those invitations out. You should go. So with that information, I began rearranging my schedule, and I figured out that I could be in Lansing late the night before, drive back home, and get on a plane at 7.15 the next morning, and then because I had too many things going on the day after, I could get back on a plane that same day at 8.15 and fly back home. It would be kind of a pain, but I wouldn't have to pack. <laughs> I got on a plane with a backpack. So I arrived in Washington, 
on Thursday. And I spent a day taking Zoom calls and making calls and doing all those things from St. John's Episcopal Church, Lafayette, which is right across the park from the White House. And then when it came time, I straightened out my suit, I fluffed my hair, and I went over to go stand in line to go through security. There are about 150 of us in line. People from around the country ones who had lost their most favorite people to guns. Moms like Pamela Bosley, who I knew from Chicago, whose son Terrell was killed coming out of church on April 4th, 2006. She was two behind me in line. We hugged. She said, I haven't seen you in years. I said, well, I moved to Michigan five years ago. And then I told her that the anniversary of Terrell's death is in my phone. And every year when it comes up, I say a prayer for her and all the work she's doing and for him. The folks in front of me were from Seattle. The ones right behind me were from Philadelphia. And one woman worked for a foundation that directs funds to groups that do violence interruption. Another group had pins that said, we stand with Parkland. Parents of the children who were massacred at Marjorie Stone and Douglas High School. And one of the kids who was killed was a really active Episcopalian. She was kind of the star of her youth group. I ran into the treasurer from Oakland County, Robert Wittenberg. He was on the very first Zoom call that we had when we began to put together the coalition that eventually became End Gun Violence Michigan. Strangers and friends gathered in a line outside the White House. The White House. <laughs> Let me just say something about being there. It's amazing. I am the daughter of a Marine Lieutenant Colonel. I stand at attention for the Marine Corps hymn, and I know all of the words. I adore our country. I do not believe that we are perfect but I am loyal to this land, and I could not but cry as I walked through those doors. Officers from all of our armed forces were there in their dress uniforms, and each greeted us warmly. They said, welcome to the White House. Thank you so very much for coming. The Marine Band played, reminding me of the soundtrack from my childhood. And then I shook hands with a major in the Marine Corps, and I lamented that they have changed the dress blue uniforms. They have taken out the iconic blue pants with that beautiful red stripe, and now they just have like a white trouser. And then I asked him for a selfie so I could send it to my dad. I wasn't alone in my awe. Every single person who was walking around had that look on their faces as we looked at the portraits and we all stood in front of the presidential seal to have our picture taken. I made my way to the seat I wound up sitting behind the sheriff from Columbia, South Carolina. I sat next to a sheriff 
from North Carolina. On the other side was a violence interrupter from Chicago. And we all sat there for a while, buzzing, buzzing. And then the band began to play Hail to the Chief, and we all stood up in respect for the office of the President of the United States, and phones came out, <laughs> and I cried again. And the program began with a young woman from Parkland, Florida, and she told of that day and made clear that from that moment on, her entire life's work now is to ensure that other students and families do not have to endure such unthinkable pain. We were at the White House, 150 or so of us invited to watch President Biden and Vice President Harris sign into new executive orders, putting more money into mental health counseling for our schools, cracking down on the creating of untraceable guns on 3D printers, and the conversion devices that are used to change semi-automatic weapons into automatic weapons. The other piece of the order was to say, from now on, let with the active shooter drills that our kids endure, parents are going to get advance notice. And then try to work on decreasing the trauma that that gives to each one of our kids. And what I saw in that room was a sadness of grief, the despair of loss, an abiding pain that was turned into purpose, promise, and hope. I saw individuals who have said no to a false choice of having to choose between the Second Amendment and the safety of our siblings in this country. We were challenged by the mayor of Birmingham a survivor, as I said, from Parkland, the vice president and the president to excise the belief that in order to uphold the Second Amendment, we must passively accept the random loss of people's lives in this country. This all or nothing thinking that in order to have gun rights, we must accept having random dead and wounded people is fatalistic, pessimistic, and disregards God's call for us to act and to care. Instead, I heard a call for us to relinquish our passivity, to let go of our nihilistic acceptance of avoidable deaths and instead strike those offending perceptions from our way of being to cut them off. I heard a recognition of the very many people in the room who have spent much of their life's energy into cutting off those beliefs and replacing them with the hard work of forging a more perfect way forward. A way that honors every person's right to live in safety and be free from harm. It was a holy moment in a secular space in a place of world power, we're in the midst of a fraught and perilous time, I experienced a sense of hope and a vision of what working for pragmatic change, bit 
by bits can achieve. Failing to take action, accepting our world as it is, means we run the risk of being stumbling blocks for the little ones. A fate that not one of us wants to bear. May God continue to be with us in this sacred work. Amen. Book of Common Prayer that's in the pew in front of you and turn to page 292. We will do a renewal of our baptismal vows. Please stand as you're able. Friends, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord. Lord. He, he was, was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. And will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Who's doing this? Okay. Humbled by the bounty and grace of our lives, let us pray without ceasing. Blessed are you, eternal God. Heavenly Father, hear us as we pray for the unity of the church. May we all be one, that the world may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That the life of Christ may be revealed in us. We remember those who have died. Father, in your hands we commend them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into your eternal glory. May we all have compassion on those who suffer from sickness, grief, or trouble. In your presence, may they find strength. Look with your kindness on our homes and families. Grant that your love may grow in our hearts. Make us alive to the needs of our community. Help us to care one another according to your life. 
inspire and lead us, and inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world. Strengthen all who minister in Christ's name. We pray for peace in the world, especially the Middle East, Ukraine, Latin America, and Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our diocesan households. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the United Church of Pakistan. In general, we pray for the victims of Hurricane Helene. There's a great deal of suffering going on in the South right now. We pray for Connor Gates. We pray for David Driscoll. We pray for Deb Wilson. We pray for Debbie Stoll. We pray for Dwayne Nagel and family. We pray for the Duncan family. We pray for Elizabeth. We pray for Elizabeth Kreider Reed. We pray for Ellen. We pray for Gia Culgren. We pray for Joel. We pray for John. We pray for Pam and family. We pray for Ramona. We pray for Rhea Rosenbush. We pray for Sue Gunter. We pray for the Perkins family. We pray for the Scoberg family. We pray for the Sofferdine family. We pray for Virginia. And you may enter your own thanksgivings and uh, prayer requests at this time. Praise to you, abundant God, for when we ask you give, when we seek you show the way, when we knock you answer. Praise to you for your unfailing grace, and make us now your faithful people. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved the neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Change of sign of peace. <laughs> We did it. Well, it was so much fun. I'll do it again. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you. Peace, guys. Peace. Peace. All right. People always have to wait for me while I do that, but it turns out they wait. <laughs> again, I am just delighted to be here with all of you. Stacy has things to say. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Well, in our announcements, um, we have Calling All Bakers. The annual cookie walk is here. 
So for those of you who are interested in doing that, and those who are, do that again. See her. Who else can they see? Yes, everybody knows who you are. Where's Janet? There we go. Okay, there we go. See those people. How many cookies did you sell last year? A lot. <laughs> I like that number. <laughs> Rick. On October 4th, we are having pet blessings in honor of St. Francis at 6 p.m. I hope that you're spreading the word to all your friends who live in the area. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. There's a call for donations for our Faith in Action Pantry. We've got a list right there of what is necessary. Okay. Wednesday Bible study at 11 o'clock in the church library. And on, are you still continuing the Gospel of Matthew? We're just beginning the Gospel of Matthew. Just beginning the Gospel of Matthew. Of Matthew. <laughs> All right. Then there is Still Waters, which is a, a spiritual formation program. That's happening on October the 5th. At, and that's going to be at where? Where is that held? Uh, probably in the church library. Church library again. Okay. What time? It doesn't have a time in here. 11? All right. Thank you, Kathy. And then there's also the Oneness of Prayer, which meets 4.30 on the last Saturday of each month. You had one already. How did it go? It went very well. We had one the first one last Saturday. Awesome. We had cookies and cake like we always do. Very good. Very good. Um, today we are blessing the new sacred lamp that we have back here as well as a communion kit in honor of Morton Cox Jr. And also a covering for the Pragi. So we'll have that today. Woohoo! There's going to be go down. Please stay for coffee hour, okay? If you don't know, that's kind of downstairs. We welcome all the visitors that we have today. Thank you so much for bringing the kids. I love it. They did a good job putting together their little project. All right. Okay. <laughs> Friends, wherever you may find yourself on your journey of faith, know that everyone is always welcome at our table, which is God's table. And as we set this table, I invite you to offer to God your hopes and fears your joys, and your thanksgiving.
Thank you. And as you're able, don't point. Don't point. Just a moment. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right and a good and joyful thing to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. And therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. And we would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. 
and that in the fullness of time you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. And on the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his friends, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we'll pro we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. And by your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And grant that we, who share these gifts, may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world and bring us into everlasting, the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that with Mary, the mother of God, blessed James, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Yeah, we could do hallelujah. I have no problem with that. I'm a fan. And friends, these are the gifts of God, and we are the people of God. Because we have real bread, Jackie will have the cup where if you need to intake, please intake there. And I will have the common cup if you, don't, if you just eat your bread without intention, then you can come to me for the common cup. We have gluten free.
taste the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Okay, for like now. I invite you to stand and we will offer prayers and blessings. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Holy One, may this light offer to us a sign of your presence in this broken, frail world, that by seeing this light we may know and be reminded that we are not Amen. And Holy One, 
May this communion kit, given in honor and in memory of Morton Samuel Cox, Jr., may this gorgeous kit bring to the people who receive communion from it and from those who offer communion from it, may each find their souls touched and nourished and transformed. In your blessed name, we pray. Amen. And may this pray do covering, with all of its beauty, may the intricate pattern remind us that your ways are complex, not always known to us, and yet and still we pray, and always you hear. And may this be a sign to us of your continued presence. Amen. Amen. And friends, let us pray our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always.
Amen. Um, before I give the dismissal, uh, the song that you will hear, the postlude, is just a closer walk arranged by Stephen Tedesco. If you feel the spirit to move you to clap, dance, move, whatever, please do so. All right. Well, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me get the dismissal first. Wait. <laughs> the eternal source calls us, the risen Savior sends us. The dynamic spirit empowers us. Go in peace to serve the triune God. Thanks. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you ready? All right. Can you hold that? Thank you. Okay. Ready? Told ya. Totally fits you. Oh, <laughs>